please be seated. Many of us, I imagine, carry strong memories of the Christmas story with flocks of sheep, innkeepers, and magi. And while these images of abundance certainly have a place in our tradition, I want to explore a more intimate look at this treasured story. Much of what we imagine in our nativity stories has been influenced by hundreds of years of European adaptation. Traditionally, each year our Christmas pageant merges the text from Matthew and Luke to paint a grand narrative beginning with the Annunciation to Mary and ending with the arrival of the Magi at Epiphany. Yet, if we focus on the scriptures of Luke that we heard tonight, I think there can be a different uh, picture of this beloved story. So our story begins in Bethlehem. Now, if you've ever visited the Holy Land or seen pictures, you won't have any trouble imagining the temperate, rocky landscape and mud plastered homes. At the time of Jesus' birth, Bethlehem was just a village with a population just under 200 people. Scholars tell us that the idea of an inn was a mistranslation centuries ago in Europe. An inn was unlikely in this time period and even more improbable in this tiny village. A better translation of the word is guest space. The brick and clay homes of ancient Israel had a large main room and a smaller upstairs room for guests. The main room was a common area for cooking and eating and living. And in the back of that area, there was a space to bring the animals in for the evening for safety. In the colder months, the animals would also add heat to the abode. There was then, by necessity, a hollowed out trough in the floor where clean hay or grass fed the animals. So when Mary and Joseph set out, they knew that there would be no inn, but that they would visit relatives in Bethlehem and normally stay in this guest space. And that's okay. That's perfectly expect expected. They will be received by distant family as if they were sons and daughters. Now, it's important to also understand that Middle Eastern hospitality would not have allowed a woman to give birth alone. Mary would be received as one of Joseph's family, and it's possible that Elizabeth and Mary's family also lived within walking distance. It may have been that Joseph and Mary planned this trek precisely so they would have the security and support of extended family. But because so many have traveled from their homes for the census, Mary and Joseph arrive at a home overflowing with guests already. The whole guest room is occupied with bedrolls, and Mary and Joseph must find their places in the busy main room. I actually love this image of a house overflowing with family. Mary and Joseph are not alone here. They are surrounded by relatives and loved ones, probably both near and distant. They are far from their house, but they are home with family. Now, meanwhile, we hear the shepherds are in the hills. Now, shepherds sometimes get a bad reputation in history, but remember, these shepherds will eventually be the model for Jesus' ministry. Throughout the Old Testament, including uh, David, the ultimate model of kingly justice is a ruler that cares for his people like a shepherd tends their flock. 
It is from this image that we come to see Jesus as the good shepherd. And so while shepherds might be otherwise unskilled or simply youths, they were entrusted with a very important job. Back at the house, when Mary's time to deliver comes, the women begin the preparation. Labor is rarely a fast thing. So they would have some time to prepare a space. They're experienced midwives and decide that clearing some people out from underfoot would probably be helpful. I can just imagine these women looking around and then gathering up the children and sending them with the older children and the household's animals, probably goats, telling them to take them up to the hills to graze with the sheep and keep them busy. Now that's better, right? They prepare the space, sweeping and cleaning the stable area to offer some privacy during birth. Clean bedrolls are arranged and all is made ready for a momentous arrival. Mary has been safely received into the faithful and capable arms of her family women for the delivery of her first child. She is surrounded by a support system and offered tender care during her labor. And it is indeed a labor of love. As the day fades and the fire is built up, the first cries of the babe are finally heard. The women might have to split their attention between mother and child, and perhaps for a moment, the freshly cleaned and swaddled child is set in the fresh, soft hay of the manger. Out in the hills, though, something entirely different is happening. As the sun set and the sheep huddled together, the shepherds nestled the children in to sleep, and a guard stands watch over all. But into this sleeping darkness breaks a dazzling light. All are startled awake by the sudden appearance of the heavenly glory. We are told over and over in the scriptures that God's messengers are frightening and overwhelming. So the first words spoken are, do not be afraid. But the divine has broken into our world. God's herald shines with a brilliance and aura that is both astounding and terrifying. And I can't imagine that their hearts weren't hammering in their chests at the sight. But they must pay attention. For the angel continues, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. The shepherds had been chosen as the first people to publicly herald the news. And with fear and trembling, they rush into town. I like to imagine those children now running ahead with the goats in tow, trying to get home as fast as possible, afraid and confused. The adults come out of the house to question them, finding a gaggle of wide-eyed and shaking children. They are brought by the fire to calm down and tell their story when they look back through the bustling bodies of the women to see a child, a new baby, lying in a manger, lying in their feeding trough. Oh, then of course the story starts to come flooding out. Children talk over each other while one slips out to find a shepherd, an adult to verify their tale. Quickly the story is spread as children whisper and point at their new neighbor's home. And all who hear the story are wondering and amazed. In the center of it all sits Mary, holding the infant Jesus while surrounded by the buzz of a busy Jewish home. Here we can imagine baby Jesus snugly ensconced in the safety of relatives and community as the whispers fade into plans for bedtime chores. How can the King of Kings come 
such an ordinary way. How can he be but a vulnerable baby? The grand Christmas pageant narrative has its place in our hearts, but this tender scene reminds us that God is always near us. As we welcome God into our hearts this season, remember that if God can arrive in this most humble and normal way, then surely God is present in our ordinary and common lives too. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. <laughs>